So if you're human, well, I assume you're human, if you're watching. It's a stupid thing to say. Hey, yo, what the f***? Well, we can't all stay motivated and productive all the time, right? Sometimes we fall into a bit of a slump, a bit of a rut, and that's okay. It's, it's not, not okay, okay staying no. Trust me, I've been there multiple times. Look at my upload history from the past two years. <laughs> <laughs> I've been dipping in and out of these because of a lot of factors and it started to lead me down very unhealthy, unproductive habits. And these are literally the seven steps that I took, which I wanted to share to maybe help you get out of a rut if that's what you're in now. And if you're new to the channel, even if you're not, allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Gabe. Gabriel Say. Anyway, I make videos to help you on your fitness and adulting journey, because adulting's hard. So if this video helps you, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button and join the conversation in the comment section. You know what to do. Smash the ting, yeah? The prerequisite for these tips is identifying that you're in a rut, acknowledging it, and maybe having to think about what's been causing it. Because for me, my main thing was my environment. My environment, living on my mom's sofa and not having my space, that was a very big, thing and then the fact that you want to take action which I'm guessing that most of you have done because you've clicked on this video if you haven't then I recommend doing that first so number one is a consistent wake up time the past maybe three weeks I've been waking up consistently at quarter past four every morning to go to the gym before living at my mum's place my mum and dad's place it would be you know sometimes early sometimes late sometimes sleep it so it was very erratic but that erratic behavior caused an erratic mindset and I really 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 do feel I mean the fact that I've recorded four videos today which hasn't happened in like a year and a half <laughs> consistently waking up and knowing that okay this is the time I'm waking up this is what I'm gonna do this is and it's a lot easier to map out the day because what I found was when the wake up time is irregular you'll wake up at a certain time and you'll be like oh crap I needed to do this and already your mind is in a state of panic and anxiety which then adds to the rut because then you're just like you know what forget it I can't bother and then you just go back into your slump so as fired up and as motivated as you might be you it's just ruined it just because of that number two is getting social outside so lockdown one happened and this is when we were living, well, we moved like twice. So we were living in a different house. That was when I only had like, I bought a kettlebell, I had a couple other kettlebells and there was like resistance bands training and stuff. First lockdown was very refreshing, but didn't really see anyone for obvious reasons. And since then, it's just pulled me into this regressive state where then we moved and had a garage and I created the garage gym, epic. But then gyms opened and I still didn't return to the gym. I wasn't feeling it. I didn't want to be around people. And then that got worse and then my social anxiety got worse. And then everything just started, it just mounts up. And in the past few weeks I've been just going to the gym and just like talking to other people. I mean, I did when I was climbing and stuff, but that was again, a very small group of people. Needed to see multiple people. Like I've been going to work events. I went to the Royal Ascot. Just meeting different people and getting social, getting active played a big, big part. So if you're one of those people that suffers with social anxiety because even for me to go to certain events social anxiety hit me hard I almost cancelled it like a few times two minutes before I was meant to leave number three is one thing that I picked up from my journal so in the journal it asks you to write down what your happy hour is and the happy hour is just something that you want to do I realized that it was a way of rephrasing self-care Especially for guys, like when we think of self-care, we're thinking, oh, face masks and stuff. Now, self-care, literally something that you want to do, something that is just for you. Being a parent as well, it's very easy to fall into the trap of, you think you're doing it for you, but you're actually doing it for your kids or your partner or someone. It's not actually just for you. So having that thing that's just for you, and that could be flipping face scrub and whatnot. Like so some days I, I like doing that. Like if I've got more time, I want to take time just like, skincare and stuff. Sometimes it's just wearing a nice outfit. Wearing a nice outfit and then doing my day-to-day, -day, go to the school run, go and see my parents, but I'm just like, yeah, I look good. And then I take the long route when I'm driving. That is my time. Number three was fix up my nutrition and my hydration. Proper brain function relies on water and nutrients. And I went through this moment where I would be in these just sandwiches. I'd go and get a meal deal. And if I did the insulin test, I'd probably see my insulin spike, which if you 
know about insulin, it will spike and then you'll have a crash. And then it depends how much it spiked. So, you know, the one minute I'd be in a good mood, next minute I'd be energetic, next minute, oh. And that's what I needed to address. And then just general water. Sometimes you could be so groggy for the whole day and you'll be like, rah, I haven't drunk any water. You drink water and you feel relieved. You feel relieved. <laughs> like someone's just lifted something off your shoulders. So the food part was slightly easier. The water part, that was a little bit harder. Like I kept reaching for it. And they were sugar-free drinks, but still like you need water, like not water with this flavoring and this flavoring and E this and E that. It's like the seven up zero, seven up three is so good. But yeah, I needed to stop reaching for that and I needed to just bang more water. And then I found water drop. So water drop basically enhances your water with natural fruit and plants. It's 100% sugar free, vegan and gluten free. And also if you're into saving the environment, you save up to 98% of single use plastic and CO2 in comparison to, you know, Standard bottles. So I actually use this a couple times a day. One, one second, one second. So normally it's first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, I like to have at least like, I don't know, three, 400 mil of water just to get everything moving properly. And the maddest thing is that these aren't like, uh, <laughs> those are empty ones in there. I have torn through this. But anyway, it doesn't add like a mad, mad amount of flavor, but it adds enough that you get like a hint of flavor. I think it's more psychological than anything. So don't put it in thinking that you're gonna have like a seven up or whatever. It's like, it's not like that. But. So my favorite flavor at the moment is this glow, which is, what is it? Mango, it's basically tropical. Mango, cactus fruit, oh, cactus fruit, I didn't even know that. And artichoke. For some reason, ice cubes are now manufactured in big flipping glaciers. So it's a lot harder to get them into the bottle. But I do like to add a little bit of ice because it does taste very nice when it's cold. Just wait for it to fizz it out and then enjoy your beverage. And don't forget code GABRIEL15 gets you 15% off all the water drop products if you want to check it out for yourself. Links are in the description. Number five, getting exercise. Now, this is a prerequisite for any of my days. Like I literally cannot function if I don't do some kind of physical training, physical exertion. Get your minds out the gut. Oh, yeah. It is included though. But this plays a massive part. I mean, the only thing that I needed to do was shake things up a little. I got too comfortable in my routine, but for some people it might be you don't train at all. So getting out and doing something, doing something you enjoy. Don't just go to the gym because people say go to the gym. If you don't enjoy the gym, don't go. It'll just make things worse. If you like flipping Zumba or boxing or whatever it is, just going for walks, running with the dogs, anything. Whatever you enjoy doing, do that and just stick to it, but include that in your day. It makes a big difference. We all love endorphins, don't we? Number six, probably an unusual one that you haven't heard in many other videos, but showing gratitude made a big, big difference to me. I mean, in my journal, like I have to state three things that I'm grateful for. When you're in the midst of a rut, no matter what good things are happening, that rut will just cancel everything else out and be like, oh, well, yeah, it was crap because you're having a crap time. But what is actually happening is good. It's just, it just might be stressful or it might just be taking its toll a little bit. But having that mindset shift to, to look at it from a different perspective changes everything. And sometimes like, I would write down the most random things because people think it's, oh, it's got to be grand and this is like, oh, I'm so grateful for the sun and the, the sun going around the, the, the earth and the rays and the, the crystals that came at the full moon. But hey, it's not that serious. I literally wrote down, I'm grateful for the socks that are on my feet because my feet are warm. Seriously, little things. When you start realizing that there's so many little things to be grateful for, it starts to make you realize that, oh, maybe what's causing this problem isn't such a big problem and it starts to make you look at it from a different perspective. So try it. Definitely try it, see, see whether it, it makes a difference. But those are the tips that I use to get out of the rut. And um, I hope it helps you too.